So I'm going to use this jack plane as an example. Um, pretty common what you'd be able to find online or in person uh, at an estate sale or an antique fair. Um, not in excellent condition, not in terrible condition, good user. Um, made by the Tabor Plane Company and they've operated out of New Bedford, Massachusetts between 1866 and 1872. Not an uncommon uh, maker's mark. So let's break this down into three separate categories. The body, the iron and chip breaker, and the wedge. Um, when it comes to the body, um, what you're looking at first off is, is the tote there and is the tote secure? Um, if it's loose, um, if it's cracked, uh, that's a no-go. Um, if you're buying it in person, is it comfortable in your hand? Um, is the horn uh, at the very top there, is it chipped? Um, that can be sanded down and fixed, um, but the tote needs to be there and it needs to be in decent condition. Second thing that you're looking at with the body are the abutments in the throat, um, if they're there. Oftentimes they're really badly cracked or missing. If they're not there, then the plane's no good. Uh, it's not a user. Um, you want to make sure that the cheeks are not um, completely blown. Um, that's right where the mouth opens up uh, at the very top of the body. Um, that those are not uh, cracked too badly. You can deal with little cracks. Uh, big cracks are, are not good and will cause problems down the road because your iron will not sit securely. Also look for cracks in the body, cracks in the sole. Small cracks are kind of just cosmetic. Big cracks that go all the way through are a real death sentence for a plane. So here's an example of a tote that's coming out. You can actually pop that out and glue it back in. That's not the end of the world. So that's an example maybe of something you could fix on your own, but here's a crack that extends all the way through the body, um, all the way down to the sole, this weird throat insert that someone put in there. I think the throat insert's literally keeping this plane from splitting in half because this crack goes, runs the entire length of the uh, plane. Um, definitely, definitely something you want to avoid, something that looks like this. So here's another example of a cracked body. Someone put a reinforcement in this one, so it's probably not going to crack any farther, um, but definitely something you're looking to avoid. Here's an example of a tote that was broken. Somebody repaired it, put a screw in from the back. Um, that's um, a good way of fixing it, but it's not necessarily something that you want to inherit when you're buying a new plane. Um, you can see how that one's loosened over time. And the horn is also cracked and chipped at the top there. Like I said, you can sand that down, um, but I would probably avoid uh, buying a plane that had a tote in, in this condition. So moving on to the iron and the chip breaker, um, the biggest thing that you're going to be dealing with here is rust and then possible um, chunks out of the out of the iron um, that would be too big to to grind down or, or sand down or use diamond plates or whatever your method is. Um, sand, uh, the uh, rust, light surface rust, is totally easy to deal with. It's vapor rust. Um, I don't suggest using vinegar, but whatever else your method is for taking off rust. Um, uh, you can deal with rust and you can deal with light chips or light, you know, uh, problems with the edge of the iron. Um, if there's something that's really, really chipped, um, I would avoid it. Um, but other than that, you're, you know, you also want your chip breaker to have a good, um, a good edge on it as well. Like I said, it's these are this is pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to um, to overthink when it comes to the to the iron. As long as they are both there and both in relatively okay working condition, then then you're good to go um, with that. Here's a couple examples. Stuff you want to avoid, this is plain, <clears throat> maybe worth restoring, not sure, but it's missing a chip breaker. Um, so definitely something you would steer clear of. Uh, this one is a plane that's in really great condition. Wedge is looking good, chip breakers are looking good, no body's looking good, no rust on the iron. 
But if you look at the iron, you can see that it has been uh, used to the point where it is, there's, there's nothing usable left on it. It's, it's been um, ground all the way back to where the, the gap is for the chip breaker screw. Um, so despite that being in decent condition and a little overpriced, uh, this is definitely something you would steer, steer clear of. When it comes to rust, um, you know, how much rust is too much? Um, like I said, light rust is, is easy to deal with. Um, really deep rust like this, you're gonna, you can take that rust off. Um, that's not the issue. It's what the iron is gonna look like uh, once that rust comes off. In this example, it would be just deeply pitted um, and uh, which, Maybe you don't care that it looks deeply pitted, but the problem is, is when you try to sharpen it, a lot of those pits, if they're on, if they're on the edge of the iron, will make it impossible to sharpen. And here's another example of of something I would think is that I would consider to be too rusted, and I would I would avoid it. And that brings us to the wedge. Uh, for the wedge, you really need to have um, those fingers. Uh, they need to be present. Um, they can be worn down a little bit, um, that's fine, but those help hold the iron securely in the throat of the plane. Um, and if they're not there, you're gonna get really bad chatter. Um, and you can reshape a wedge to try and get those, those fingers back. In fact, one of the first videos I ever did for this channel, we did that. Um, so it can be done, but ideally if you're buying a plane, you don't need to worry about that. You, you want a plane where you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and so that's the main thing to look for with the wedge. So here's an example of, of one word that's been completely worn down. Um, plane in decent condition, decent iron, but I would, I would avoid that because of the, the wedge. Um, the other thing to look out for is if a wedge has been really hammered on um, and it's just got the that the top part is uh, is all is all messed up. Um, you want to avoid that as well. Um, I mean, it doesn't look great, but the likelihood of that wedge splitting at some point in time is pretty high. So now looking at the plane um, uh, as a whole, the the main thing, the last thing that you really want to be aware of is the size of the mouth. And I'm not talking about the overall size of the mouth, I'm talking about the gap between the leading edge of the iron and the front of the mouth. Um, for a jack plane, that should ideally be no bigger than an eighth of an inch, although I feel like you can really get away with it being bigger than that um, for some planes. Um, this is really probably too big of a mouth. Um, What you're hoping for is something more like this. Um, that's a much tighter mouth, um, and then you're going to get much. You're going to have a much easier time planing with a mouth that's smaller like that. So that other plane, while it's in great condition, the mouth is a little too big. This plane is got the handle problem that we looked at earlier. Um, so that's not ideal. But man, look at that nice, nice tight uh, mouth. That's really um, one reason that this plane may be, you may want to deal with the, the tote problems um, just because you have a great mouth. The smoothing plane, um, this one is just totally unusable. A uh, smoothing plane needs to be even tighter, um, you know, 16th of an inch, you know, eighth of an inch kind of thing. Right there, that's, that's, not, that's, that's not usable. Uh, the only way to deal with that is to chop out the uh, mouth and put a mouth insert into the sole, um, which is actually what I'm going to do with this plane in a, in a later video. Um, but it's a lot of work and it's, it's a fun project, um, but it's do you want to put that amount of work into a plane um, that you just bought? Uh, here's an example of a smooth plane that's in really great condition. Another another example of something you would want to buy. Really tight mouth. Um, scrapes on the bottom are not a problem. It's not going to affect the handling of the plane. Um, body is looks good. No cracks. No chunks out of it. 
uh, I think it's in Maker's Mark on there. You just can't really make it out. It might and if you took off some of that dirt, you'd be able to be able to see what it is. So you know, like I was saying earlier, the things that you want to be looking for, the iron is in is in great condition. Chip breakers there. A little bit of rust would be easy to deal with. Um, when it comes to the wedge, the fingers are, man, it looks like it's brand new. Um, so overall, really a plane that, um, as long as you can get it for a, a decent price, would be a, a great, a great user. Uh, really, a, a good example of, of a, of a plane that's that's uh, out of the box, um, really ready to, almost ready to use. Um, which brings us to my last point, which is price. How much did you pay for um, one of these? And uh, the problem with you know these planes is that people who are selling them really don't know what they have, um, and so you see a crazy range of prices, especially online. Um, really, I would be spending no more than twenty bucks, um, like that smoothing plane that I just use as an example um, you know I I definitely pay 20 for for that that's that's high it's definitely at the high end but that that plane would be worth it um, for the most part 15 to 20 is a range that I would shoot for uh, maybe higher than 20 if it's in if it's just in remarkably good condition um, I would consider but but definitely below 20 is is I think a fair asking price for a good user um, obviously if it's a collector's item that's a different category at all really um, but so you know here's here's something you know just your standard you know user uh, smooth plane being sold for $50 I mean I think that's just that's just insane um, so here's another example, a uh, jack plane. Um, looks like it's in good condition. Um, I have a chip out of the horn on the tote, um, not sure. Um, body looks good, wedge looks good probably, um, but $40, holy cow, that's uh, way, way too much money for, for a plane. So fair asking price for a plane with decent wedge, decent iron, not too much rust, no problems with the body, maybe a tote that needs a little work, um, 15 to 20 bucks, uh, and you should be good to go.